guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to another video. Today I'm here with a get ready with me video, maybe seasonally inappropriate, but I'm feeling like a pinky kind of orange eye, even though we're moving into fall. But anyways, I'm really excited that this video is sponsored by and in partnership with FabFitFun. We're going to be chatting about their mini beauty box. So let's go ahead and get started. So if you're not familiar with FabFitFun, they have these great kind of seasonal lifestyle boxes, and these are just going to be a mini version of them, which I think is really exciting. It's a great way to try new products. The products that I got today, I've actually, I had never tried any of them, so I'm going to get into them in a minute, um, but it is $25. You get up to $100 worth of products, and they are three full-size products as well, which... I always appreciate and they've actually got this kind of like members only shop where you can get really really great deals I think it's like up to 70% off of some of the items uh, and it's it's things that you can find in stores so it's a really really nice way to save money if you're a beauty lover like myself and I assume you are if you're here there is also a limited supply to these beauty boxes so it's kind of a get it before it's gone sort of situation but let me show you what was in mine so the first item is a cleanser and this is from Kate Somerville I've actually never had anything full size from Kate Somerville I think I've had some samples here and there uh, but this is the exfolicate cleanser which is really really nice I have been using it since I got the box and this is uh, it has AJ's glycolic acid lactic acid pineapple papaya lots of different enzymes in there it's meant to not dry your skin uh, leave it fresh conditioned um, and it does a really good job removing makeup and things like that so really really been loving this and excited to try the brand because I hadn't uh, and then another brand that I've never tried again outside of samples so nice to get something full size uh, is the Dr. Brandt and this is their Pores No More Luminizing Primer and I'm wearing this on my face right now. I put it on after I wash and I have to say for a primer I'm always a little bit scared of primers that say they're going to like eliminate pores because they can have thick textures and they don't work well under makeup but this is really really nice it has a luminizing look without any glitter in there it says it gives a natural looking backlit glow which I really like it's just a little bit more natural uh, revives dull complexions and helps refine the look of pores but doesn't get in the way of makeup application and you know I'm a sucker for a brow gel so I was really excited because I've actually always wanted to try this brow gel but for some reason I've never pulled the trigger on it so here it is today um, the Anastasia Beverly Hills clear brow gel I've heard amazing things about this I'm pretty sure it's been out for quite some time so I don't know why I didn't pick it up but really really glad to see it in the box I'm going to be putting it in use today but be sure to check this out I will have links down below if you would like to see it for yourself really exciting to be able to get three full-size products I think it's a great price uh, and a really nice selection of products too so if you're curious about it I will have a link in the description but let's go ahead and get into the rest of my look so I've been loving this combination including the elf halo glow liquid filter in shade 5 with the uh, Smashbox Halo Healthy Glow All-in-One Tinted Moisturizer. Really, really nice kind of glowy combo, but good lasting power. Very important to me. Um, and if you missed me kind of talking about this Halo Glow, it's not exactly like the Charlotte Tilbury one. Um, to me, it has a little more coverage. Um, it's kind of just a different, it's a different product in my opinion, but both very good. And then I'm going to use some of this. This is in the shade medium tan. Starting to match. My, my tan has faded a little bit, but because this product doesn't have too much coverage, even when I'm a little deeper in the summer, we're moving into fall now, it still, it still matches me really well. It's a beautiful coverage. I don't know if it's underrated. I don't feel like I hear a lot of people talking about it, when, especially when it comes to like tinted moisturizer products. It's newer. It has SPF 25 in it. Great to wear your own SPF though. For my under eyes, I've really been enjoying this uh, Fenty Matchstick in Peach. It's quite a good shade for me. I find some color correctors, a lot of the time they're like too deep red or they're too light. So this has been uh, a good shade for me. Just a little of that under my eyes. And then some of the Rimmel Multitasker Concealer. Really love this one if you're looking for something on the kind of fuller coverage side from the, from the drugstore. And then I'm also going to use this uh, Maybelline Instant Age Rewind Perfector in Medium Deep. I don't have a shade that matches my face, but I do have this shade, and I tend to use this almost like a bronzer, kind of warm up my face. Really nice, um, really nice texture. I'm curious to get the shade for my face. Let me know if you've tried it. Uh, and you can remove that kind of spongy thing too. I know a lot of people don't like that sponge. I like it. 
I don't know if I'm in the minority on that, but it doesn't gross me out. I'm gonna go in with some setting spray. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Going back to my old ways of almost forgetting cream blush. I wanna use this pretty pink blush from Kylie Cosmetics. I've never, never used this brand. Never used it, kind of have actively stayed away from it, but let's try. I have Feeling Neutral and Pink Me Up. This is the Lip and Cheek Glow Balm. I'm gonna try it with my fingers. Oh, this is pretty. Definitely gives a nice glow, nice little bit of pigmentation. I also can't get enough of this uh, Fenty Ease Drop Lit All Over Glow Enhancer. This is in the shade Honey Citrine. It's so pretty as a liquid highlighter. I think I definitely like it more as a liquid highlighter and um, to mix in with my foundation than I do under my foundation. I prefer something, this is a little bit lighter, a little bit more liquidy and no shimmer or anything, so I don't find that like it enhances texture. It just looks really natural and beautiful, and the color is so pretty. Okay, now I'm gonna set. It's so funny, like, back when like cream bronzers, all the kind of stuff came in into style or whatever, it was so hard for me to actually remember to put it on my face, and then it really hasn't been hard up until today, which I just demonstrated, but there were so many times where I'd be filming a YouTube video and then realize I forgot to put the cream products on my face. So, a little throwback. To set my under eyes, I'm gonna use the Huda Beauty uh, Blondie Easy Bake Loose Setting Powder. Really love this. It's a perfect shade because, you know, all those banana powders when they came out years ago, a lot of them were great. Some of them a little bit too light for me, but this one has just enough depth so that it still kind of brightens, but it's like, um, there's a little more depth than the typical banana. So great if you're a similar shade to me. And then I'm just gonna lightly set my face with this Kosas kind of baked powder. It's the Softly Cloud Cloud Set. Really nice kind of light powder. Wanted to reach for my Nabla bronzer. This is the Skin Bronzing uh, Sun Kiss Effect Bronzing Powder in Dune. This is the kind of, I don't use a lot of bronzers like this. It's very tightly packed, so I kind of use a bit of a denser brush than I would for uh, a lot of my other bronzers that are a little bit more, uh, I guess, loosely packed. And this one you just kind of need to, I, I, what I really like about it is it is so buildable, but a denser brush with it quite helps. Uh, and a lot of the time I get asked the question, like, why do I use cream and then powder? I'm excessive. You know, you don't, definitely don't have to. It kind of depends on the look you're going for. Um, you know, I have the type of face that makeup tends to, like, not want to stay on, and I just find it adds some reinforcement. It can look really natural, building light layers, but you can definitely do one or the other, a combination, uh, whatever works for your, for your face. So now I'm going to use the Anastasia Clear Brow Gel, which, which I got in my FabFitFun mini beauty box. So excited. I am a brow gel stickler. And I mean, if anyone knows brows, like it's definitely Anastasia. I like the brush. I always love a bigger brush. And what I really, someone commented recently actually on a video because I've been cl complaining about all of the brow lamination products that are out. Because like, you know, not to toot my own horn, but like I've got pretty good brows. So I was like, oh, this is great. This is exactly the look that I like. I'm so glad these products are in style. But then I would be using them and my brows were like falling, even when I did it with no makeup, um, did it before my foundation, like I just can't seem to get them to work. And someone was saying when you have like a lot more brow hair, longer, fuller brows, it seems like they can't be slicked down in the same way with product. So I have to go back to kind of more typical brow gels, I think. So this is perfect timing to, to be trying this. And so far, so great. So I've primed my eyes with the um, Milk Makeup Hydro Grip Eye Primer, which also you apparently can use under your eyes under concealer and <laughs> similar to cream products back in the day, I always forget to use it. So I need to keep that out on my desk. But today I'm gonna be using the uh, Sephora Color Clash Palette. I purchased this in Sweden when I was on vacation in the summer and uh, I haven't really gotten much of a chance to use it. And the pink and orange sold me along with this absolutely wild gold so I'll bring you in to put it on my eyes and I have not done my brows in a while so mind the spare hairs so I'm gonna start out with this shade here definer I'm curious to see if it will pick up on my eyes because it's kind of a light movie shade oh yeah it's normally not the kind of shade that I would technically reach for right away like especially with this type of look I would go with like a warm brown but it kind of pulls a little warmer on my skin than I was expecting it to 
I find like kind of purpley eyeshadows sometimes can look brown on my skin and sometimes it's good sometimes it's bad depending on the look that I'm going for but I like this uh, then I'm gonna take darker and just putting it in the outer upper portion of my eyes I will say though like as much as I'm oh excited for like a pinky orange eye look I'm also so excited for like dark ox blood lip colors I love a brown lip it's been a while since I've worn like a brown lip then I'm gonna be taking troublemaker and game changer the kind of two bright shades in there I'm gonna take game changer the pink first it's gonna want maybe pink to go orange and these types of shades you know they're hard to pull um, pretty true to color on the eye, so you can always put down a white base. I'm sort of just curious to see how this works on its own, and I don't want it to be incredibly bright, but you can always put a white base if you want it to really pop, but then on a more dense flat brush, I'm going to take Troublemaker, which is, oh, uh, the orange shade. That's beautiful. Okay, definitely when you pack it on with a brush over fluffy, I mean, I think that's not shocking but beautiful the l'oreal telescopic i've never tried it before uh, and i'm curious this is like such a popular mascara tiny thin thin brush i mean you've probably seen it i somehow have never tried it but i see this giving me lots of length i hope really thin i guess it's so you can kind of stir it around in there interesting so I think you can see it definitely gave me tons of length, not a ton of volume. It's definitely more of a lengthening mascara. You can see it there in action. There's something, I just wish the brush was a little less flexible because I feel like I have a little trouble grabbing onto all my lashes, but the end result is nice. You definitely get long lashes. Let me know if you've tried this. It's such like a cult favorite. Kind of want to keep the pinky peachy thing going, so I'm gonna use the Benefit Krista blush. It's sort of like this, I guess, corally shade. I'm gonna go more nude on the lips, but I've been loving these Benefit blushes. And I'm gonna use a little more setting spray and go back in with my Fenty highlighter. This is how I've been getting really good glow lately. I was using the Refi highlighter for this for a little while, currently on the Fenty. You can skip putting it down first, actually, on top, uh, under your foundation if you want. But I find putting down a little setting spray and then patting it on top of powder is gorgeous. ColourPop BFF3. Then I have this Jason Wu lipstick, which is really, really nude, but I figure over the lip liner, it might be okay, and then I might add a gloss. This shade is like basically, it's not like on my lips, but better, it's like a my skin tone lipstick. But I kind of like it, and then I'm going to put this Buxom Gloss in Mykonos over it. So add a little gloss, a little peach. So here is the finished look. I hope you enjoyed getting ready with me. Be sure to check out the FabFitFun uh, mini beauty box that I will have linked down below. And as always, if you'd like to connect with me, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at SamanthaJNYT, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!